Hi everyone, Teddy Baldassar here, and I am joined by a special guest. I have Hugo Giacomi with me from, did I say it right? Yeah, yeah, Hugo Giacomi. Giacomi. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, the Parisian gentleman. And can you tell people first about your channel uh, yeah. and uh, that, but I, just to say what we're doing here today, I brought in a, a natural French speaking gentleman mm -hmm. who can speak to a world of fragrances that commonly are, I would say, at least from the brand perspective, coming from some French influence, mm -hmm. or French speaking influence, of course. And I wanted to lean on you to help us talk through some of that today, but please give some background first before we give you the stage on how to pronounce these. No problem, my name is Hugo Jacomet, I'm 18 year old. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm joking, I'm a little bit older than that. And uh, I'm the founder of a website called Parisian Gentleman, and it became a book, and two books, and three books. And I specialize on men's style, classic men's style, what we call the sartorial world. It's anything which is custom made. Uh, all our work is to look for the best artisan in every um, sector of our field. Suit making, shirt making, tie making, shoe making. Always obsessed with artisanship, craftsmanship, artisanal brands, and we try to do uh, modestly try to give a share of voice to the people who didn't have a share of voice before us mm -hmm. uh, because all the big brands they can afford advertisement, little atelier can't. And this is how we started in 2009 and now we have an all ecosystem with the blog The Parisian Gentleman, two YouTube channels, okay. Sartorial Talks in English, Discussion Sartorial in French, and then uh, three books so far, four books actually, uh, all reprinted several times, even in um, a smaller version now, so that the, uh, the people can, can have it around the world. So the Parisian gentleman, the Italian gentleman, and the last book was on shoes. It's called The Art of Male Footwear. So, uh, well, we are pretty much active, just as you are, Teddy. Absolutely. Yeah. So, the ground rules for today, and I'm going to get out of the way, because unfortunately I try my best, mm -hmm. but I want to lean on you to help us guide through this. I've selected around 20 or so brands mm -hmm. that I'd like you to speak us through. Yes. So what we'll do is we'll present them to you, and then you'll talk to the camera and help the people at home on how to pronounce that from the native tongue of the yes. French language. And maybe give a, one or two information on each brand, uh, on which I know, because Absolutely. we don't have any, we have a little bit of a perfume section on our uh, sartorial talks. It's uh, held by my son, who's a specialist. But it's not our specialty, but we know a thing or two on French perfumery because on my first book, uh, The Parisian Gentleman, we dedicated two chapters to perfumery with Guerlain and Caron, but we're going to come to this very soon. Let's get started. Okay, so the first one is Guerlain. So no Guerlain, Guerlain, no Guerlain, very easy. Uh, a fantastic perfumer, probably the most iconic perfume house in the world, uh, which is a real perfumer. Abbey Rouge, Vetiver. So it's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful brand of uh, perfumery, Guerlain. The next one is Caron, very simple. Caron with the famous Pour un homme, for a man, uh, which is an, an iconic uh, fragrance, so it's very easy to pronounce Caron. Next one is bon, Yves Saint Laurent. Everybody knows how to pronounce Yves Saint Laurent, I suppose. Uh, very famous, uh, of course, um, the most famous um, perfume by Yves Saint Laurent is Opium. Uh, this is an iconic perfume, Opium, by Yves Saint Laurent. Uh, next one, oh, bon, this one, you don't need my help. I know you say Chanel, but it's Chanel, uh, from the name of Coco Chanel, of course, with uh, the most I think it's the biggest sell of all times in perfume is the numéro 5, the Chanel number 5 of Chanel is the biggest, uh, the most successful uh, perfume of all times, numéro 5 de Chanel. Uh, next one, uh, well, this is a, one of the pride of France, it's, a, it's, it's now the name of a group, it's Hermès. So Hermès was um, uh, the, the Greek king of uh, flying, I think he had some, some, some wings. On his, um, um, on, on his foot. And uh, so Hermès, uh, Eau d'Hermès, Eau d'Orange Verte, all this is a beautiful brand, of course, um, from a, a, a luxury group in France. Ah, oh, Goutal. So I think the real name, maybe they changed to Maison Goutal, but the real name is Annick Goutal. Annick Goutal, uh, named after the founder, she passed away in the late 1990s. She was a very important woman. And uh, the first perfume, if I remember well, is called L'eau d'Adrien. Uh, Adrien is probably a guy she knew, so she made a water for him. And you have also Petite Chéri. Petite Chéri is like little darling in, in English. I think it's a tribute to her 
uh, daughter, if, I, if I'm right, and her daughter who is now the nose of Annick Goutal in Paris. So Frédéric Mal, uh, you can have, some, for example, my wife is wearing Eau de Magnolia by Frédéric Mal. Uh, this is beautiful perfume. Uh, you have also Portrait of a Lady. This is bizarre because it's, uh, <laughs> it's in English. You have Musc Ravageur. Mm, that's a very interesting musque ravageur. I can't translate that, but it's very French. So Frédéric Mal is a publisher of perfumes at, uh, and is, uh, he's very famous in France because his uncle was a very famous movie director called Louis Mal. And uh, by the way, just for the little sake, uh, his father created Dior Parfum. Uh, his father created the perfume for Christian Dior. The first perfume by Christian Dior was created by uh, the father of Frédéric Mal, or his grandfather, actually. Next one. Atelier des Heures. Well, I'm not very familiar with this brand, but I know how to pronounce it. Atelier des Heures. Or is the, the gold. Uh, atelier is an atelier. So Atelier des Heures. Uh, I saw that, uh, unfortunately for me, uh, all their um, branding on their perfumes is Black Collection, White Collection, Riviera Collection. So they use a little bit of English, which is a sin in France. When you're French, you don't use English words. We are trying to protect our language because, you know, the English people, they, they don't need to, to study another language. Why? Because with, Eng with English, you can go anywhere in the world. But what are uh, French? You know? So we are protecting our language. So uh, I will uh, call Atelier des Heures and uh, tell them that Black Collection, White Collection, Riviera Collection, doesn't seem very good. And, and I'm sure it's very good perfume. Next one. Oh, I can tell you that this one is probably extremely uh, challenging for you people. So, it's, it's about a, a guy called Francis Kirkjian. Very easy, sounds easy. Francis Kirkjian. So, I give you a little trick. If you see a name finishing by I-A-N, like Kirkjian, uh, it's probably because this man is from Armenia. The vast majority of people from Armenia have a name finishing by I-A-N. The next one, in French, the next one we call Le Prochain ou La Prochaine, Lancôme. So now we go into mass market, because Lancôme, alors, you see there's a little hat on the O. So Lancôme, Lancôme. It's like, for example, for example, you know the, the, the plaza, the place in France, in Paris, where all the jewelers are? Like uh, Van Cleef and Arpel, Boucheron, it's Place Vendôme with an O and an accent. Lancôme, Vendôme. Now let's move to a complex one. I'm pretty sure you guys are struggling with this one. Diptych, very easy. Diptych means two things, diptych. In French we have the word also triptych, will mean three things, okay? Beautiful brand, a little bit more, I would say, I was about to say snub, no. Artisan brand. Uh, like the name, these people are not very simple, but they do some tremendously creative perfumes. You probably know this brand. It, it, was, it used to be Givenchy, one of the most imp important fashion brands for women uh, back in the years. Uh, it was created by Hubert de Givenchy, who just passed away. He was the best friend of Audrey Hepburn, very famous. Uh, guy, Hubert uh, Givenchy, very elegant man. Uh, now they have two, two divisions. I know that the, the fashion is on one side, Givenchy perfumes and uh, whatever care products are on the other side. And they have one also which is kind of close to my heart, not in terms of quality but in terms of name, because they have Gentleman by Givenchy. Uh, the next one, uh, oh, this man just passed away uh, two months ago, Thierry Mugler. Very strange animal, Thierry Mugler. Uh, of course, once again, I don't know why we are doing this in France. We have such a beautiful language and we, we are using English. His most famous is Angel. Okay, sorry. And uh, I can't say anything wrong uh, because he just passed away and he was a good guy. But why do you use English name Alien, Angel? This is English stuff, not for us. Okay, sorry Thierry, but I, oh, well, I'm sorry. I have to pay tribute to him because he passed away. It was a, it's a beautiful, but it's not totally my style, even of perfumes. Let's continue. Le Labo. Well, it's easy, Le Labo. So uh, um, Teddy told me it was a French creator and it's an American brand, right? Well, this is the new brand of people, you know, making some kind of customized things for you, as far as I know, and they don't sell you only one perfume, but like an, an array, a range of things around him. So they have, um, they, they name their perfume, like for example, Santal, like the wood, the wood, Santal, and then Ilang. It's very easy, okay? So um, it's Le Labo. Next one. Um, and okay, so Cartier is a jeweler, 
well, let's let's make let's be blunt. You know, the perfume is some kind of a not on the side, but they're not very famous for 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 perfume. Even if they probably do some very high quality perfumes, but for me, Cartier is most and for all, you know, mostly a jeweler, and also in watch they're quite powerful. Ooh, I like this one, Serge Lutens. So. No need to do Charles Lutens or Lulin Tron, no, Serge Lutens. Very simple. So on the next one, I, as I don't know this brand, I don't want to make, a, I, in my opinion, it's called Montal. Very easy because the, the creator is Pierre Montal. So if he's French, it's, it's pronounced Montal. But I don't know if in their marketing they want to, to pronounce it Montale. I don't know, but I think it's more Montal. Montserrat. In French, you pronounce Montserrat. Uh, but I'm pretty sure in Italian, you can Manchera or, you know, in Italy, but I would say Montserrat. Who doesn't know Jean-Paul Gaultier? Very important fashion designer in France, very famous for Le Mal, the male, uh, who has been created by Francis Curtian, that we talked about. And I think this is the first time in the history of perfume that the bottle is more famous than the juice. Oh, this is a beautiful brown. Lalique, very easy. Lalique. So you have to understand that Lalic is, uh, first of all, it's from Switzerland. No? It's not exactly from France. This is the number one brand in crystal. And this is what they do. And they also do a little bit of perfume. Very easy to pronounce. Lalic. So let me do it quickly for you once again. Guerlain, Caron, Yves Saint Laurent, Chanel, Hermès, Annick Goutal, Frédéric Mal, L'Atelier des Heures, Francis Curtian, uh, Lancôme, Lancôme, you remember? Lancôme, Diptyque, Givenchy, Thierry Mugler, Le Labo, Cartier, Serge Lutens, Montal, Montserrat, je suppose, Jean-Paul Gauthier et Lalique. I give you an appointment to the next episode of Teddy Balsare Show. Baldassare! Sorry. <laughs> Show. Bye bye.